we felt in our spirit to yeah to speak to some men and women of God that we believe must help in the church and as as overseers and so let it be in Jesus name so I just ask each one of them to come and share what in a very short way one to two minutes what God is showing them for the church for us as a family and that what he has for us so uh Let's just receive from them that what God wants to say to us. Amen. Hallelujah. Give a hand to my wife. Good morning. I believe God would like to encourage all of us with an image of a rose while working in the garden this week. Um... I looked at the rose that we had to prune a few weeks ago, and sometimes pruning in our lives isn't all that fun, but so totally necessary if we want to grow. And um, secondly, I believe in this time God says that we must really rely on the Holy Spirit like never before, to be in his presence, that it will be like um, the rain that, or the 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 host pipe that, wardens the, uh, that waters that rose, that we will spend time soaking in God's presence, spending time praying in tongues, stirring our faith, um, stirring our spirit to be tuned to the accurate frequency of the spirit. And then I believe we should be rooted in the word of God. Um, I, I think this is a time where deception will become more and more and more in the church in general, so I do believe it's, it's very important for us to stick to God's words principles clearly and have God's words in our hearts and start to learn it and memorize it and not even that, but to look at it. Um, and then thirdly or fourthly, um, I thought of in my attempt sometimes to, to fertilize the ground, there was some weed in between the compost. And um, let's trust the Holy Spirit that there where we received mixed seed, mixed weed in between what we're trying to feed ourselves with spiritually, that we will give God permission to come and uproot what is not from him so that we will be able to blossom and, and, and to, to be well established and healthy in his presence. And then um, the scripture that God gave me is in Romans 4, verse 9 to 10. And um, it's the scripture where, this, where, where it's asked if Abraham is justified because of circumcision or because of um, his faith. And I think it's very clear in that scripture that it said that it was because of his right standing with God, his righteousness, and his faith in God that he was able to be happy. That's what the Amplified Bible uses. And may we find our joy and our strength in our right, right standing with God as we not attempt to please him out of our fleshly um, attempts, but that we will please him by the faith that we walk in. Be blessed. Amen. John 14 says, let your heart not be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. And in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you will also be. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. Amen. That was just a scripture that I received for us as a congregation, just for, for this new season that God is taking us into. And just realizing that there's so, so many varieties within us. So, so It's so diverse, different languages, different cultures, different backgrounds. Um, but yet we all come together to seek the face of the Lord. And we all come together in the house of the Lord. Amen. And um, just realizing that we know which way we need to go. And I was so encouraged with that, that we've many years have had good teachings, many years have had a lot of impartation, and that we know which way to go. So I want to just ask you to do a little activation. You can look at your friend and say, let's go. 
And then you look at your other friend and you say, because you know. Amen. Good morning. So um, we had three sheep that we were hand raising and um, giving bottle milk and everything, little baby lambs. And I spent a lot of time with them, gave them a lot of love, and uh, would feed them at whatever time in the mornings and cold, late nights. And uh, so I put in the work and the time with them, and they got to know my voice, and they'd follow me, like in a sense, when I'd call them, I'd say, meh, and then they'd come running, and, um, and it's amazing, like they'd even, if I'm walking through the garden and I'm talking, then they hear my voice and they come running, so it was really cute. And, um, and really special. And um, Adam was joking with me the one time saying, oh, you know, like they, they don't really, like is it that special that they only follow your voice? Anyway, so then we had a bit of a test. And, um, <laughs> and then we had a bit of a test. And they had just eaten. Now usually when you call them when they're hungry, of course they're going to come. But when they've just eaten, they might not come because they now are fine, you know, satisfied. And uh, then um, Adam said, okay, well, let's test this. So then he's like, meh, 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 and he's calling. And uh, they just weren't looking up, weren't interested. And the minute when I, a little bit softer, meh, and then they, all their heads up. And, um, and it was amazing how, just how attentive they were. And I really pray for each of us in every day, in busy times, in good times, in wherever you are, that when God, when Father speaks to you, that you'll be so aware and attentive to his voice that that as he just starts speaking, you just know his voice and you just respond to that voice. And I pray that, um, yeah, that it will be such a special love connection that just draws you to that voice above all the other mass. Um, yeah, that you will just be so attentive to Father's voice. Amen. Hi, good morning. So my, oh, did you want to clap hands? Was was that a? <laughs> I just I just saw people signalling there. Clap hands, clap hands. Um, my David today says relationships are key, and um, while I was praying also for this morning, I got Hebrews eleven, and I just experienced for us as a congregation. Um, that we don't just come to a place of being comfortable with sharing our hearts with one another. All right, so in discipleship, we come, you know, we've got certain people that we feel comfortable with to be able to share our hearts, but that we are able to connect hearts, right? That we are able to connect hearts and we are able to know one another's hearts beyond what we see, beyond what we hear. And beyond that, to know one another in the spirit, right? And it's also to come to the place of not just seeing eye to eye, but also seeing in the spirit, seeing one another in the spirit, but also seeing together in the spirit, right? Seeing where God wants to take us in the spirit. And the scripture Hebrews 11 um, is where Abraham is setting out setting out to, to find the city whose architect is the Lord. It's something invisible, right? It's some, something that's not natural. And you need to have faith, right? Faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. And you need to have faith to be able to see what you do not see. So we must be in the spirit, not just to see in the natural, but to see what God is showing us as a congregation. And I want to challenge you this morning. Um, let us as a congregation be so in unity that we can see one another in the Spirit, but also see together in the Spirit, and that we will find that place that we will build um, with the architect, all right? The architect of that which is in the Spirit. Amen. Just remember to clap for me as well. Thanks. Um, yeah, to add on to what Peter said from then from Hebrews um, 11, Hebrews 12 says, um, let's lay aside every weight. And if there's one thing that can hinder us from seeing each other in the spirit, is sometimes those 
either whether it's an offense or a little weight or, you know, you start seeing people through different, different shades. And um, I just want you to do this. Just do this. Now, now, you know, sometimes there's, you know, someone says something, someone that doesn't really matter to you or they look at you in a way or whatever and it's like, uh, it's a little, uh, it's not nice, but it's easy. It's like a little, just brush it off, no big deal. Then somebody may be closer to you or someone whose opinion you value says something or do something in a way that you like, mm. I don't know if you've ever felt like, all the time. Wow, Patty. <laughs> okay. Um, so now just I want you to imagine something bigger just on your shoulder. Yeah, yeah. And try to take that off. Like uh, it's a bit heavier, but you can still get it off. And then you get some of those if you watch a lot of animations. Um, try to take something off. Imagine it's like, uh, like octopus. Octopus. <laughs> I'm thinking like a jelly gooey something that you try to take off, but there's like some still stuck there. So it, it would like bounces back, you know, that. So just, just try to do that quickly. Just go, and even though it bounces, okay, yeah. Now, if you don't get rid of that, sometimes it gets this bigger something. If you haven't watched the movie yet, Pil Pilgrim's Progress, the animation is on YouTube, it's for free. There's this part where he has, he's got this big backpack on his shoulders, right? It's like, and and it's, it's almost like it gets heavier as he journeys along. And then he gets to this one place where, where he, he just says, I'm going to focus on God. And you actually see it's this very dark tunnel, and he sees Christ, um, like this light shining out at the end of it. And he just puts his focus on that and how every time before that he tried to get this backpack off and it didn't want to come off. And the moment he started focusing on Christ, the author and perfecter of our faith, it just started coming off by itself. And, and initially, I thought, I'm the person who's like, oh, just brush it off. It's not a big deal, right? And God gave me this dream last night because he knew I'm talking about this. And it was, it, 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 something happened, and I was not just offended, but, but um, in the dream, it was so real how somebody, now where's my English? What's the nagekom? Yes, the nagekom. Someone did you? wrong. Someone did you wrong, like intensely. And I felt so, not just angry, but grieved. Like you want to, in my dream, obviously, but like emotionally, just like broken, crying. And I'm going to people saying, do you not see this as a problem? And others are like, it's not a big deal. And then the next situation happened. I'm like, do you not see this as a problem? And it's just like, ah. And I woke up going, I'm going to just stay home today and say I'm sick or something. I can't get out of bed. That's how emotionally real my dream, dream was. And I just, it, God just showed me. And he said, well, now, now when you feel that, sometimes it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal for somebody else, but you feel it's a big deal for you. Can you put your focus on the author and perfecter of your faith? So I literally had to come here today putting my focus on God, and I can feel how God lifted that off. Some things you have got to just throw off. Other things you've got to just put your focus on God because he wants to take it off because only he can. All right. Amen. Good morning. <laughs> that was close. Okay. Um, so when I prayed for uh, about this morning and what God is saying to us as a congregation, he reminded me of um, the staff meeting we had. There was this little bird that was in the building and flying around and hitting the wall and hitting the ceiling and going toop, 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 trying to get out. Um, and in that staff meeting, the Holy Spirit just ministered to me through that picture and said, if that little bird just stops flying and trying so hard and doing what it always does and just comes down and just walks on the floor, just stands there, turns and sees the light coming through the door, then he will get out of this building. But he's trying so hard and he's, he's doing what he knows how to do in his own strength and he's got to fly high because that must be where the exit is. Um, and God just ministered to me so much through that, um, saying, isn't that what we need to do in our lives, just to humble ourselves and to come down and to just rest in him and, and see, turn our eyes and see where the light is and follow the light. And then he would just walk, we will just walk through things. We will just go through things and it won't, it won't be so strenuous for us. And um, yeah, so the scripture that God gave me with that is, is John 16 verse 13. 
uh, it speaks about the spirit that we have inside of us, which is the spirit of truth. And it says that he will guide us into all truth. So I'm just going to read it. When, but when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears. He will tell you what is yet to come. He will bring glory to me by taking from what is mine and making it known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said the Spirit will take from what is mine and he will make it known to you. So that for me was so amazing that we have this Holy Spirit inside of us, each of us and us as a congregation. We, we have the Spirit of truth. We have the, the, the ultimate truth, just like that, that little bird. There is an exit. There is a way. There is truth. But in humility, even the Holy Spirit doesn't say what he wants to say. He hears from God and he only speaks what God says. Um, so God just ministered to me through this, how in the season, how it's so crucial for us to come just to humble ourselves before him, just to see where he is, what he's saying, what he's speaking. Um, yeah, I really believe this is a season of um, God said to me three words, three things. It's purity, purity like the Holy Spirit is just pure. He does nothing of himself, but just God, purity and truth and his kingdom, those three things and his kingdom coming in our congregation, for us as a family, that his righteousness, his peace, his joy will be here, that we will see his kingdom, and then also through us to the world out there. So I really just yeah, bless us with that, and I speak that over us, and I believe we will see it in this season in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes. Good morning, everybody. Um, I just want to share one scripture with you. Because I know Nikki's coming up soon, and I have to get this done. Uh, in Isaiah 51, verse 1, it says, Hearken to me, or for those who don't speak that language, um, listen to me, you who follow after righteousness and justice, you who seek and inquire of the Lord, claiming him by necessity and right. That sounds like us, right? That's why we, we do church, is because we're claiming God as necessity for life. Thank you, Emma. Now look to the rock from which you were hewn. Look to the rock from which you were cut. And to the hole in the quarry from where you were dug. And it's amazing that God says, hold on a moment. You, you love righteousness and, and, and justice and truth. And you love doing this church together. But let's look where we come from. Look at our DNA. And when we look at one, each other, one another, do we see that rock from which we were cut? And that's my challenge for myself and I believe for all of us is that we will start to celebrate more and more the quality that we're seeing in one another. We've got to find that thing. I've got to look for that in you. We're cut from the same fabric. But many times we, we happen to look through so many different things. Esther also kind of touched on that. But I really believe that we're going to move more into that thing of, as living stones, we're going to see more and more of how we share the same makeup. We come from the same source. And to trust that same source in each one of us. And I can trust the rock that you're cut out of. I can trust that there's quality in your life. I see it. And when I see you, I can see me. I can see a reflection because this is harmony. And, uh, yeah, I believe God is taking us to greater things. And may you be blessed. Just be trusting for this. Amen. So I had a number of day words during this past uh, couple of weeks about the congregation and um, in that same theme. And so um, something that really stands out for me in all of this is um, I experience God's promise that this is a new season, a new life coming to us as a congregation. And um, as I drove past the little copy that burned down, did you see the green grass that came through out of that um, ashes? And I believe that's also prophetic of uh, what God's going to do in our midst. Amen. So maybe many situations in families and in personal situations where you might have experienced 
a, a devastating fire, and what, if you look around you, you might only see ashes. But God is going to turn that around. I believe that. And, um, and I've got an expectation in my heart for, uh, for new life. So one of the scriptures that uh, was attached to one of the day words, um, I just experienced to share that with you, and it's well-known scriptures out of Zechariah 2, chapter 2, verse 8 says, For he who touches you touches the apple of his eye. And um, this is such a beautiful image to me that us as a congregation is so precious to God that he will encompass us with his strength and with his protection. And that's true for our families, that's true for our marriages, but that's also true for us corporately as a family, that we will experience uh, both God's strength on the one hand, but also the sensitivity in the spirit, like the apple of the eye, that's a very sensitive part of the body, that we will experience that in the spirit. Amen. And then verse 10 says, Sing and rejoice, O daughter of Zion, for behold, I come and I will dwell in your midst, declares the Lord. And I've got expectation in my heart that we will see in a new, fresh way God's presence in our midst. Amen. The presence of the Holy Spirit and that, um, that His presence will be so sweet to us when we get together, when we sing in our cell groups, when we get together as families, that, uh, that we will just uh, yet again experience God's presence in a new and a fresh way. Amen. There's also some, I believe, six keys out of 1 Thessalonians 1 that I experienced God opened up to me for us as a congregation as keys to unlock these dimensions. And, um, but we will speak about it in future. God bless you. Thank you. The balancing act. This pulpit is at a steep angle. You've got to know your thing. Um, as I was spending time with God this morning really early, um, I just went through my day with scriptures and prayed through it, and I really experienced this is what God wants to say to us as a congregation for the season ahead. And um, the first scripture that I got was um, Ezekiel 37, which is the Valley of Dry Bones. And um, oftentimes everybody says, oh, I know that piece, you know. And I said to the Lord this morning, Earlier, I said, I really want to read this attentively because I believe it's something that you have for us in this season. Um, I've had some challenges in my own life where I've been praying for certain things, but I haven't necessarily seen the outcome that I had hoped for. I had seen other outcomes, but it was not exactly what was on my schedule. And as I, my eyes focused on Ezekiel 37, I went, started at verse 1 and went through the chapter. Verse 1 said, and the Spirit took a hold of Ezekiel and placed him in a certain place. And then God said, what do you see? So in this season, what I experienced God is saying is, where are you placed? Are you allowing the Spirit of God to place you at a certain point where you can see what God wants you to see? The second thing is that he saw dry bones. To us, dry bones is dead. I mean, if we look at the copy, like Lep has said, it's, it looked dead, but there was life there. And God said to him, you prophesy. And he told him exactly, point for point, what to prophesy. So how accurately are we oftentimes listening to what God is saying and speaking that into our situations or into our circumstances? And the beauty of it was that Ezekiel had to obey twice. Before even prophesying over Israel, he had to obey twice over the bones that he saw. And God brought life. So into our situations, I really experienced that God is just leading us to align ourselves accurately with what the Holy Spirit is doing. And what the Holy Spirit is saying to us, that we give accurate utterance over circumstances and situations, whatever you might be facing, that you accurately articulate what's on Father's heart to change the situation, and there will be life. And then my second day word scripture is in John 6 verse 27. I'll quickly read it to you guys. Do not labor for the food which perishes, but the food which endures to everlasting life 
which is the which the Son of Man will give you because God the Father has set his seal on him. And if you just read a couple of verses down, it says that Jesus Christ reveals himself as the bread of life. And in order to have accurate um, articulation and vocabulary, we need to dig into the Word of God. That is our sustenance. It cannot perish. It builds. It's from everlasting to everlasting. It stands. It is the truth and nothing but the truth. It cuts between marrow and between bones, but that's our vocabulary. So I want to really encourage you guys in this season, as you're drawing into God's presence, get, dig into the word. That's where we find our Father's heart. That's where we, we get to know him. That's where you see his character and his heart for you. And just get the vocabulary inside your spirit so that when you address a situation, you have the vocabulary inside of you to address the situation with the truth. I bless you guys. Good morning, church. Okay, let's try again. Good morning, church. Yeah, thank you. That sounds better. Um, I'm going to read Psalm 1. Uh, it says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, but delights himself in the law of the Lord. And on his, and on his law, he meditates day and night. And then um, he is like a tree, tree planted at, by the streams of water that yields fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither, um, and uh, in all he does, he prospers. Um, so I just experienced um, how, as we as a church stay in the Word, being made alive by the Spirit, how we'll be relevant in the changing times out there and the times coming. So, yeah, I would just want um, you to say with me, uh, if I stay in the Word, I will stay relevant. Amen. Thank you. I just want to bless you. Thank you, my darling husband. Hey! I look forward to embarrassing him many, many times. He chose me, so it you know, comes with a package. Amen. Thank you, Malerato. Um, as I was praying about the church and just... Um, Lord, what's on your heart? The word family just kept sticking with me. Family, family, family. And so then I just asked God, but Lord, what about family? And the following is the sentence he gave me. He said, this church has been called to be a family to various individuals for various times of their unique journeys traveled. So just like a mother hen that kind of draws in her chicks under her covering, some will remain permanently, but many will be sent out. And then also just with that, I want to just pray Psalm 27 over us, if that's fine with everyone. So if you can just close your eyes with me, or keep them open, it's up to you how you speak to God. So Lord, I thank you that you are our light and you are our salvation. Whom shall we fear or dread? Lord, you are the refuge and stronghold of our lives, of whom shall we be afraid? When the wicked, even our enemies and our foes come upon us to eat up our flesh, they stumble and fall. Though host encamp against us, Lord, our hearts will not fear. Though war rise against us, even then in this we will be confident. Because, Lord, one thing we have asked for, and that we will seek after and inquire for and insistently require, that we may dwell in your house, O Lord, in your presence all the days of our lives, that we will behold and gaze upon your beauty, O God, the sweet attractiveness and the delightful loveliness of the Lord. And to meditate, consider, and inquire in your temple, O God. For in the day of trouble, you will hide us in your shelter. In the secret place of your tent, you will hide us. You will set us high upon a rock. And now shall our heads be lifted up above our enemies round about us. In your tent, we will offer sacrifices and shouting of joy. We will sing, yes, we will sing praises to you, O God. Hear, O Lord, when we cry aloud, have mercy and be gracious to us and answer us. You have said, seek you my face, inquire for and require my presence as your vital need. Our heart says to you, your face, your presence, O Lord, we will seek 
inquire for and require of necessity and on the authority of your word. Hide not your face from us, O God. Turn not your servant away in anger. You have been our help. Cast us not off, neither forsake us, O God of our salvation. Although our fathers and our mothers have forsaken us, yet you, O Lord, you have taken us up. You've adopted us as your child. Teach us your way, O Lord, and lead us in a plain and even path because of our enemies who lie in wait for us. Give us not up to the will of our adversaries, for false witnesses have risen up against us. They breathe out cruelty and violence. But what, what would become of us had we not believed to see your goodness in the land of the living? So, Lord, we will wait and hope for and expect you, O God. We will be brave and of good courage, and we will let our hearts be stout and enduring. Yes, Lord, we will wait and hope for and expect you. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. Is it still morning? No, afternoon. Okay. I would just like to share a few scriptures with you. Um, it's from John 16 and then also from Exodus 14. So in John 16, verse 16, Jesus says, In a little while you will no longer see me, and again after a short while you will see me. And then after that, Jesus just explains um, the relationship with him between him and the Father and what that entails for us. And then in verse 33, Jesus says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have perfect peace and confidence. So I don't know about you, but I don't always feel perfect peace and confidence. Um, and it goes on and says, in this world... You will have tribulation and trials and distress. And it goes on and on. But I want to first turn to Exodus 14. There God says, Moses should tell the people, Fear not, stand still, be firm and confident and undismayed, and see the salvation of the Lord which he will work for you today. The Lord will fight for you. And you shall hold your peace and remain at rest. So if we go back to John 16, verse 33, God says, In the world you will have tribulation and trials and distress and frustration. But be of good cheer. Take courage, be confident, be certain and undaunted. For I have overcome the world, and I have deprived it of its power to harm you, and have conquered it for you. So if we go back to verse 16 where God says, Jesus says, In a little while you will no longer see me, and again after a short while you will see me. That verse just popped out, and I realized, but where will we see Jesus? We will see Jesus in ourselves, and in each one around you, you will see Jesus. And if we can take courage and, and know that the the line of Judah is roaring within us. And that is why we can stand in the midst of trials and tribulations. The testimony of our lives is not that it's smooth sailing and that um, because I know God, all is well all the time. It's not. The testimony of our lives is that in the midst of frustration and in the midst of trials and tribulations and giants rising up against us, that we can stand firm and be confident and have peace that surpasses all understanding. And that we can focus our eyes on Christ inside of us and Christ in everyone around us. Because we can overcome because he overcame. So, um, yeah, in this congregation, I've really experienced that we are motivated and um, to, to really have intimacy with God. So let's be encouraged to to keep our eyes on Jesus. Good afternoon. I can testify that the Lion of Judah is living inside of my wife. She pra practices her roar on me sometimes. Especially when I do something wrong. Um, 
I'm just going to read what I just experienced for the congregation. Um, it's got two of my favorite words in this uh, scripture. It says, um, Then as he lay and slept under a broom tree, suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, Arise and eat. Um, and then he looked there by the head of, was a cake baked on coals um, and a jar of water. So he ate and drank and lay down again. <laughs> and, and the angel of the Lord um, came back a second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat because the journey is too great for you. All right. So um, he arose and ate and drank and he went in the strength of the food, 40 days and 40 nights, as far as um, the, the mountain of, of God. And um, what I just experienced is that sometimes we experience that we are, we are tired. And there has been certain victories. Um, it's talking here about Elijah. And, um, but the Lord is also encouraging him to eat. And I want to encourage you to, to eat God's word, to, to eat the spiritual food. So that we will not grow weary, that we will that we will be able to make it, and um, that is that is the thing that just stood out for me. That we must take in God's word. That when we have to go the extra mile, we will be able to do it because we've got the word of God inside of us, and that will give us supernatural strength, supernatural ability, not just normal food and drink, but spiritual food and drink to give us that edge when we need it to be there for us. Amen. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Um, I uh, sat with the Lord a while ago on the 25th of July, and I'm um, just speaking, uh, praying um, for the church, and praying for the church globally. It was in the time where the church was challenged with the government of not opening up, and the churches wanted to open up, and and it was just everybody wanted to go back to church. And I was thinking about the situation that we experienced and how upsetting it was not to come back to church and the emotions that arose and, and all that. So I was praying for the church and just praying what God wants to do in our midst. And, um, and all of a sudden, I just had this prayer flowing out of me. And, um, and then I started writing down what I experience um, in my spirit. Um, Jesus never came for system, dom system dominance. He just lived. And in the ordinary going about of life, he influenced and was. He did not dominate and, or overthrow the Roman or worldly system. He challenged the religious system to move from the old to the new. Again, the religious system is challenged with going out of and beyond the old and into the new. Religion sought for messianic dominance and power and freedom. Jesus did not give it to them. The time has not yet come. The church, the believers, and the religious system was not ready. Church, find the joy and authority to just be to be without religious systems that add to your identity, your purpose, your motives. Something deep and real and powerful is to be birthed if you can give up what you know. In the greatest shaking of religious system, Jesus loved, healed, delivered, spoke good news. Again, a worldwide challenge threatens belief. Follow Jesus' example. Do not fight, demand, or become arrogant. Step out into the joy and the freedom of faith. Persecution has always stopped and forbidden activity. It is all right. God is still on the throne. Be church. Be. Be on the watch. Be what the world needs. Love, hope, comfort, joy, kindness, compassion, grace, wisdom, justice, faith. Be faithful to me, not to the system. Be strong, 
be my body, be part of me. I am bigger than a gathering. I am bigger than church buildings. I am enlarging you in a new way. Let go of what was and step into the new. And with this, I believe God really wants to draw our focus to what the Spirit wants to do in our midst and to respond to that. And last week, I just sat in my garden and I... Um, and my eyes were drawn to two little two trees in some of the other neighbors' uh, garden, and it was the cypress. Uh, I don't know if that's the English word, cypress. There you go, cypress trees. And um, and the one was tall and a little bit bigger, fatter, and the other one was smaller and shorter with a very thin top. And at that moment, you know, the August winds blew. And um, so this, the wind blew these two trees. But I was so captured, I just know, knew God wanted to say something through this uh, example of these trees. So I watched these trees, and the wind blew it. And you know what the little, uh, not, it was not little, they are very tall. The, 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 the tall, fat one, it moved and it swayed in the wind. But then the thin with, uh, th thinner, shorter one with the thin point, he really bend it over <laughs> uh, in the wind. And when I saw that, God spoke to me. He said, when the Spirit of God moves, we move. It is like when the wind blows, it moves and bend and shake the leaves and the branches. But the wonder of the wind's touch is no tree moves bends or shakes the same as another when it is moved by the wind's touch. They respond in their own unique way, but move they will. They, there is unity in that law. There should be unity in the spirit. Response is a unique and beautiful thing. When we learn to only respond to the spirit of truth and life, our response will be an expression of his touch and movement. It will be accurate, and it will be a true testimony of his person. So do not mimic other, how others move. Do not focus on human responses. Focus on him moving you. And I think in this time in the church, what God wants to do is really um, draw us into that relationship with the Holy Spirit so that we will be accurate to pick up what God wants to do in our midst and only respond to that. Okay, hello. Are you all well? Good. So um, I just experienced, just to share with you the following, um, John fourteen twenty three. this is the scripture of our church. Do you know that? Okay, great. Okay, so John fourteen twenty three says the following. It says, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. And what I just experienced for us as a church is that Father God wants to come and make his home with us and among us. Okay, but also that our relationship firstly with God, that's our first relationship, but also that we will get to know one another. We will reach out to one another. We will be there for one another. Pastor Peter also said relationships is a key. Okay, Emma, family, that we will really be there for one another. But firstly, our relationship with God, and secondly, our relationship with one another. And then the third thing that I just experienced is that we will rise as sons of God. Okay, so we are children of God, but then the next facet is to rise as sons of God. Amen. Well, guys, I said in the first service, you know when you watch the movie, the true story of the old man, for 30 years, no relationship with the son, the dad really messed up, made a great gemors. And after 30 years, the son, on the, on the deathbed, with his dad, he can go and the father says five stuff, five things. Forgive me and always walk in forgiveness. And the second thing and the third thing and the fourth thing and the fifth thing. You know, the son walk out there. 
I will not remember. I will not remember what my dad said because he messed up my life. That will be very freaky. Even the guy in the world without Christ will think, but that, that will be totally freaky. Hello? And so sometimes we can mess up with stuff. But it's not like I take the word from Emil because he's perfect. I take it because God's anointing is on his life. Amen. That doesn't mean a leader can live the way he wants to. No. But let's receive what God has for us. Amen. My, my spiritual father, Duham, before he went to heaven, now he's Dr. Jonathan, but before Duham went to heaven, in one of his last conferences, he was speaking and uh, with some interesting voice. He said, you know, these guys, they write songs, worship songs and pray songs, and then they expect us to sing their songs in church. He was a little bit going off, but everybody knew the only one now at this stage writing songs and he's singing in church is Cornelius van Einigen. Okay. And there was a time when we wrote, I want to praise you, Lord, and Jesus, Lamb of God forever. And I was sitting there and said, okay, Lord, what are you saying? And afterwards, some guys came. They were so offended. and said, I can't believe he said it. What do you say? This is wrong. This... And I just saw this red light. It's time to judge. It's time to stand on right and wrong. How wrong he was and how right I am. And I saw I can miss it. But I cannot be the temptation for this man in the second offense that he's taking now. I said, you know, what we need to do is we need to bring everything before the Lord. If it was said in whatever way, I need to bring what he said before the Lord. Are you with me? Are you with me? And a lot of stuff that he said at that stage that we didn't understand about the church in general with worship. A lot of stuff happened 20 years later. So many people said Duom was such... A few dec he was a few decades before his time in what he saw, in what he taught, in what he gave through, and what a lot of people got offended by. But I had to make the decision. I need to hear what is God saying to me through that man, even though I didn't like what I heard at that moment. Are you with me? So I say with with brothers and sisters with one another. Let's not take offense. Hello, but let's hear. You know, the church will rise up in Christ because we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. But the spirit of judging is so close to standing in Christ as righteousness. So I stand as the righteous. I stand... In the right, and the right is Christ. You have a right to be in the presence of God. And that is only because of the blood. Only because of the perfection found in Christ Jesus. You with me? So there is a right that you have from heaven. That you have this right. God gives you this right. But so close to it is that I can have the right to judge. What is right and wrong. And that is the tree of knowledge of good and evil. It was so close to justice. So close. It's so, so for Adam and Eve to distinguish from this perfect world. Perfect world. What can we bring in this perfect world? That could be this temptation. If the enemy can create the platform for you. To evaluate. And to judge then it can get you to be unfaithful to God. It's not just, I choose to be unfaithful. Something must be presented and that you get on that platform so that at the end of the day, you can be unfruitful in what God has for you. So, to stand on the right and the wrong of the situation, it's like the enemy to discuss. And people can come into your life. And especially if there's a weakness 
in our lives. Oh, the enemy is not stupid, man. He will find the person to come and sit with you. You know, that thing, that thing, that what they are doing, or what that guy did, or what Patrick did, you know, that's not right. And it could be from a spirit, a demonic spirit, where you judge based on what's right, what is wrong. Or we can stand in Christ and say, what is the righteousness of God? Who I am is only by grace. If I see a mistake, God, but for your grace, there goes I, even ten times worse. And from the place of humility, what can I learn even from the weakness in my brother and my sister? Hello? But when I must come to that person, not to tell him what's right and what's wrong, but speak the truth in love. How the man perceives it. Now that's another ball game. Hello. Because you can come with truth in love. Jesus looked at the rich man in love. And because he loved him, he looked at him and he said, Go and sell everything that you have and then come here and follow me. The man stood up. He saw no love. He saw no truth. He didn't see the heart of God. Nothing. He went up there and he walked away from God. He said, This word is too hot. This word is too hot. So it's very shocking. How we can perceive what we receive. So may God help you, even when we hear testimony, when we hear encouragement, when we hear challenge from leaders and from our lives and from circumstances and people around us. How we interpret. Because the enemy in a perfect world, Eden, needs Eve and Adam to interpret what God is doing in a wrong way. He needs to bring an in, in, interpretation of life and what's happening in life in such a way where you will stand on the right and the wrong so that you can lose your authority and fail in your destiny. Be careful with that. I just feel I must put that out there. Thank you, God, that you come and you help us. Even this morning as we hear what you have said through the leaders. God, I pray that you will give us the grace to walk in that in Jesus' name. Thank you for by your mercy, by your grace, through your blood, we can be the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus and stand before you with boldness, Lord, because Christ did a perfect work and that we can stand in perfection in Christ. We honor you for that, Father, for that privilege that you've given us. Help us. Keep us from judging, judging ourselves and judging people and situations from a demonic source. Thank you, Lord, that you help us in that, that you guide us through your word, that we can have an excellent life with you, based on grace, with boasting in the cross. We honor you for that, Father, in Jesus' name. As all say, amen.